is everybody? Oh, they're sleeping in. It's the day after a holiday and a Saturday. So. They've all rested and recovering from their holiday hangover. <laughs> All right. Good morning, everyone. People wake up. Oh yeah, you got plenty now. There's all at once, huh? Yeah. Well. Okay, so this thing go up anymore. Lift went high. No, it does not. Sounds like no. Okay, so we just got through putting the transmission after a bunch of modifying because I run a GM starter. On all my street cars, a little gear reductive GM starter like, like they put on LS's. Um, because if I lose a starter out on the road, go to any O'Reilly's and get them. My problem is they got a rib on the nose of the starter. So as you can see, it is a tight, tight, well, actually it didn't fit. That's where all the aluminum is. Lots of modification to the bell housing to get it to slide over. Which, yes, it'd be easier to grind the starter. But then if you break a nose cone, you get another starter, you gotta do that show on the side of the road. Since I drive this car, I drive this car a lot. Fix and drive it even more. I figured I just better do it the right way. So, <clears throat> uh, I told you guys the other day about this Turbo 350 with the SFI case that we're testing out to see how much power one of these will take. I don't know if I made it clear the other day. The other thing about Turbo 350 over 400, it's like these nose have got a little bitty tiny tunnel. You can see where I had to modify this one to fit a 400. But Turbo 350 slides right up in there. <clears throat> Since you guys like this technical shit more, let me point out something where everybody, where a lot of people get in fucking trouble, not front pumps out of transmission. My up here, stay. That converter is only supposed to pull from all the way back. It's only supposed to pull out of there an eighth of an inch to three sixteenths of an inch. Everybody thinks, oh, you just pull it up there and bolt it up. No, you do not. See the gap right here? Need some light on it? Yeah. Hang on. Hang on, we'll shine some light on the subject. That gap right there is only supposed to be between an eighth and three sixteenths of an inch. If you got more than that and you pull the converter back, there's two splines in that converter that slide into that front pump on a GM. If you pull it back, you, you're probably gonna snap the, the converter. If you push it in too far, the motor has thrust, especially on these blower cars with a pro charger and mm -hmm. nitrous. It pushes it back, it's gonna push it in the front pump and kill the transmission. For those that are just joining in, what are you working on? I'm working on my Nova, trying to get it done. So uh, I can go back out and do a little playing on the street. So I was putting the, the Turbo 350 in and I'm telling everybody how to make sure you shim your converter correctly. Because you'd be surprised at how, many, how much shit gets tore up because of that little simple deal right there. Now, if you're too tight, which is not good, you need to pull the converter back out and you need to take some off of the, off of the lux. If you're too tight. Look right here, I got a perfect eighth of an inch. If it's too loose, like Marty Chance has spacers that bolt onto his converters for mid plates and all that, or you can actually just put washers in there. Eighth of an inch at three sixteenths of an inch from all the way back, pull it out. That should be, that should be the amount that the converter comes out of the front pump to hook up to the flywheel. So, there you guys, uh, you'd be surprised how many, how many guys that's done shit their whole life don't know that. They just stick it up there, they pull it out, and whatever it is, it is. Not all, not all things are equal. So, check the clearance on your front pump. <clears throat> Make sure you got eighth of an inch when you fly on your converter. So you don't fuck the front pump up, don't fuck the transmission up. So, there you go. Happy belated Merry Christmas to everybody. I was actually down here working on this, so I'm gonna get back to working on it. You guys can get back to 
Curing your hangovers. What? Question. What? Which kind of went, which kind of in sync with, so an LS starter is high torque and it will bolt on a conventional small or big block? Well, is that correct? GM makes a gear reducted starter. It's a little bitty tiny starter that they put on LSs and they put on some of the later style big blocks and shit like that. But it's a it's a gear reducted starter, so it's no different than the the GP starters and all that that you buy. And I hardly ever lose one. I mean, I, I run them on just about everything that I drive on the street. I run one of them because if something happens. You go right to O'Reilly's, AutoZone, anywhere, and you can get you a brand new starter. So, that's why I run them. How much horsepower will your Nova make? The Nova make before on pump gas and 16, no, 14, 14 or 16 pounds of boost with 20 degrees total timing in it. It made 9.98 at the time. So you took a turbo 400 out of this car yes. and put a turbo 350 in. Yes. How do you, how will that change your performance? Like, does it pick up? What will it pick uh, up? Here's the thing. Turbo 350 is lighter and the shifts are snappy. There's, there's no transmission. I, I, it, it is my favorite transmission for shifting. The problem's always been with the turbo 350. They won't take no, if you turn the line pressure up, you'll split the stock case. ATI is the only one that ever came out with a aftermarket case. What you giggling about? Somebody asked where Waldo was. Waldo is not here yet. <laughs> Waldo somewhere. Just don't know where Waldo is. So, uh, I put the Turbo 350 in here because it, it's lighter. They shift faster. Um, and there's another reason, but I'm not going to tell you guys that reason. There's a reason all my stuff leaves really good and it's really fast short time. So I can get a 400 tire to work, but I'm not going to share that with nobody. Everybody will have to figure that out on their own. This car leaves it dead hooks on the street at 18 pounds of boost on a sticky tire. Matter of fact, that's what caused me to have to pull the motor out, put a piston in it, it twisted the car. This car's got a stainless gas tank in it, and at the time, I never had a sump. So the car, it's got a tube. That, that goes from up here that goes down. So when the car twisted and it twisted really bad and it did this, it pulled all the fuel away from the tube, leaned the motor down, cost me a piston. So we put a sump in. But that's what that's the there's another reason with the turbo 350, but I'm not telling anybody that part. That's figure that out in your own car. Hang on, another question. What? I like doing these live so they can ask questions. Oh, nope, nope, don't wanna see me. How do I flip it back like that? <laughs> uh, drive shaft link, are the drive shaft links also different between the 400 and the 350? Yes. Okay. Let's see. Um, how much does the turbo 350 cost that you put in here from ATI? Good question. That was the thing that kind of shocked me. These turbo 350s with the, with the good sprag and, and the SFI case and all that. I'm pretty sure he told me retail almost like $3,800, $3,900. Brand new with an SFI case, which is pretty cool. That, that's, that's pretty reasonable transmission too, because that, that's the thing. They built these cases to, to appease the streetcar guys, bracket guys that want that extra that extra gear. And we're gonna see how much power this will hold. This should take 14, 1500. So this car with turned up on the bottle, that's probably about what it makes. Um, but if anybody can tear shit up, you guys know I can. So that's why they sent me one. When will they be available and where can you get them? They're available now and all you guys got to do is message Stacy and Stacy can actually save you some money off retail. So it's a pretty cool deal and I say it's got a good input and output and all that stuff but we're going to see what shit I can break in it because whatever I break they'll build the parts out of better part out of better material 
that there's just no point in building a bunch of aftermarket stuff if, if it'll hold. And, and stock Turbo 350 and stock 400 are pretty damn tough. But we'll see. Pros and cons to this transmission versus a two-speed power glide. Would you, do you even run power? You haven't ran power gliding Quite a power forever. Glides. The thing about a power glide is you got you, you got a dramatic drop between the one two shift, which is low high. Power glide doesn't work well in a heavy car. It's actually some transmissions too bad. Uh, I ran them in heavy cars. That used to be the go-to transmission because one they were they were cheap to build. They're easy, the simplest transmission in the world to build. The problem is is they don't that gear change. If you've got a 198 low and then you're one to one. The gear change, especially on the street, that gear change is critical. You either got to have the converter loose enough that on the shift it drops about 250 RPM because if it drops a lot of RPM, what it does is load the motor, especially nitrous and pro-charge motors. It'll load the motor and make more power and then it'll knock the tire off. So I don't tell anybody the ratios I run because I run a totally different ratio than most people, but I don't like a lot of ratio between the gear changes. Except the silver truck. The silver truck has a two eighty mm. low gear, mm -hmm. which is the lowest low gear I've ever put in anything. But it's super heavy, and that's why that truck won four, five, sixty foot. So I told you guys that much. Mm. All right. What ECU are you using in this car? What? What ECU do you have for this car? Uh, so they only fuel, make one. Fuel injected. They only make one, Holly. <laughs> Anybody else start making them? No. That has a sniper, right? Yeah, I, I run a blow through sniper on this car. To everybody's dismay, especially even Holly. But <clears throat> I run no intercooler on it. I run no pump gas. So basically, I use a sniper like a blow through carburetor. And what converter do you use and what stall? Marty Chance. That's the only part of that question I'm going to tell. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the, conver the converter is a key to every one of these cars out here. And Marty's been doing my converters for 15 years, 20 years. Every converter I have, I run Marty Chance's converters. Because you call him with data, you tell him what it's doing, he can tell you how to fix it. Okay. Another question. Why do a lot of people do LS turbo conversions? Why not Hemi 6.4 liter? Seems the Hemi is the same liter capacity as a Chevy. Why? Okay. I don't understand the question. Okay. Turbo LS conversion. Do LS turbo conversions. Let's see if he responds. I, I guess your question is, why is everybody not putting Hemi's and and Camaros and Novas and all that? The LS is the, 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 the bigger choice. Well, one, now this is just what I think. One, it's a GM. So nobody's going to think about, nobody's going to want to put a Hemi on a Nova. But the other part of it is, is the aftermarket parts are huge for an LS. And and with the stuff that Holly's came out with, it is, I gotta sit down. This went longer than I thought. Now my back's starting to hurt. The stuff that like, that, that Holly's came out with, the sniper stuff, and they do have, they, they do have stuff for the Coyote motors, and, um, the Coyotes and the, um, what? Where did I do? Somebody wanna know what, what transmission fluid do you use? I, don't, I run Maxima in everything. Conveniently, you have on a Maxima shirt. Oh. And I handed you a bottle of, of transmission fluid. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. And the thing is, I, I run, question. oh, let's finish that LS. Yeah, here. yeah. So the LS, th there's tons of them out there. They're cheap to buy. Um, they work good. Coyote motors are, are, are cheap to buy and work good. But they're a little harder to fit. I see a Coyote motor, they're super wide. So... It, it, it basically, it's a lot cheaper to build an LS than it is the other ones. The after, but, but it's been that way for Chevrolet for a long time. You look, you, you uh, big block Chrysler, big block Ford, big block Chevrolet. You find parts all the time for the Chevrolet. You don't hardly find them for the Ford or the Chrysler. Not that any of them makes any more power than the other one. You put, you put the same parts, it's combustion engine. That's what everybody forgets. And nowadays, Nothing's even brand specific anymore. A 481X is not a big block Chevrolet. The Hemi's everybody's running, that is not a fucking Chrysler Hemi. That's a hemispherical head. 
which is a huge fucking thing everybody says, oh, it's a hemi. No, it's a hemispherical head. But when you think of a hemi and a roadrunner, a 426 hemi, and the hemis everybody runs now, nothing is the same. Nothing. Not one part will come off a of 426 and fit any of the shit we run. Just like my big box Chevrolet stuff. I stay conventional with mine. I don't have, I don't get elaborate with it. But at the end of the day, the the unless you're running a conventional 23 degree head like the 540 was, the the 14 and a half degree stuff that I ran in Reaper, uh, that that's not shit you go buy off. Well, actually, you can you can buy an 18 degree head from GM back in the day. But none of this stuff is brand specific anymore. Everybody says, "Hey, I run a Hemi." Well, you may run a Hemi, but don't know if it's a, it's not a Hemi like everybody runs, like, like, fix it. Those Hemis are all billet. There's nothing the same as the Hemi everybody thinks about. Big Block 4, nothing is the same as the Boss 429 or anything like that. So. Yeah. Um, what kind of transmission fluid do you use, and is it good for a stock transmission? I run Maxima in everything. Every max. I used to run. I used to run um, Amsol. Mm -hmm. I hated that stuff. You get it any little bit hot at all, it smells like sulfur. I've been running. I have not lost a transmission or lost a bearing in any motor of mine since I switched everything to Maxima. And when I say I run Maxima in everything, I mean you guys can see I run Maxima in everything. I run all the way down. Hell, I even use Maxima bio wash to clean the floor and stuff. So Maxima, a lot of people don't know that Maxima does as much as they do, but they make assembly loops, they make all kinds of shit. And I have, I have yet to fail with any of their lubricants. Do you build your own nine inch rear end housings? My brother does. There was there was some good discussion back a little ways, but there's been stuff and I can't catch it. But Bye. anyway, cool. Yeah. And by the way, let, let me say, guys, when I do this stuff, just the way I do it. It's the way I do it. Opinions like assholes. Everybody's got one. So there's no point in coming off correcting me because I'm not going to listen. Now, if you got a suggestion, I'll, I, if you've got a good suggestion that saves time or money or any of that, of course I'll listen to it. But to come in, some guys come in and go, that's totally wrong, it, it may be, but it's my way. I'm just telling you what I do, or some of what I do. Yeah. Um, engine oil, Maxima, Maxima. I run Maxima engine oil, transmission fluid, I run it in my diesels, I run their coolant, I run their, um, I use all their cleaners, their, their suspension clean and contact cleaner. Every, everything that we use in this shop that's a solvent or oil, that's the only stuff. As far as I'm concerned, it's like Holly. It's the only one. Holly's the only one that makes ECUs, and Maxwell's the only one that makes oil. And I've tried them all. I used to be a huge Vaveline guy. At one time, I jumped on the bandwagon with Castro. Because my boy John Force was running Castro. John Force don't run Castro oil in that fucking car. <laughs> I find I find out at a later date. A lot of people talk about Royal Purple. Royal Purple used to be, you know, some good stuff, but it, it that company sold a long time ago. Brad Penn sold a long time ago. A lot of those old companies that everybody ran and raved about, they're not what they used to be. Maxima Oil, the guy that owns Maxima Oil, has had an opportunity to sell out to WD-40 and Walmart and wouldn't do it because he don't want them to jack, jack his shit up. Mm -hmm. So... What's your opinion on a direct drive turbo 350? Direct drive turbo 350. Well, I don't run sprint cars, so it would never serve a purpose to me. What do you run for brakes? Do you have a brand that you swear by? Uh, I run strings. And, and guys, listen, th th this is, I, as Matt, Matt's got a saying, 
I stick with the dicks and the balls that I know. Same deal here. I've tried every brand of everything out there, and I got it. You guys see how my lucky is. I got to stick with the shit that don't cause me problems. And, and it's not just because they're behind me. It's, I, I believe in every one of these products. Something, something. Peak Stacy's interest. She's trying to find it. No, there's just... So, you're holding a really good audience, and there's lots of questions. So, I'm just trying to go through and and answer them. Okay. I asked earlier, did you uh, did you soup up Santa's sleigh? Not yet. Not yet. He keeps wanting to, but no, he has not. What? <laughs> Have you souped up Santa's sleigh? No. The Yukon is still all stock. Oh. It won't be. <laughs> it won't be much longer. Okay. And no, you're not vaping THC. You're vaping yeah, vape, I, I, vape. I, I, and I yes, I am a yes, I am an ATI dealer. Out of time motorsports dot com or on Facebook. I do not smoke weed. I don't eat edibles. I, I none of it, none of it. I when everybody said, uh, oh yeah, everybody says they're allergic. Well, I'll end up in a fucking hospital because the last time I did it, that's what happened. It collapses my lungs, and, and I've spent three days in ICU. So you will never see me high. You will never see me partake. I don't give two dams. If everybody says your body changes after seven years, you may not be allergic now. Fuck that. I'm just not going to do it. Does Maxima make bearing grease? Yes. They make a badass assembly loop. Oh, and I don't have the brain cells to spare, just so everybody knows. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Make everything. Wheel bearing grease, a high pressure lube. But Scotty just pulled uh when we when we fed all that shit through that motor, it had 80, 89 passes on it and had been four O's most of those times. Three nineties a couple times. And when he pulled them apart, I, I walked in there and I said, well, how the bearings look? He goes, like new, like they always do. So I have good luck with all these with Maxima. Jason Lee for a case of oil. Message the page. Once you start running, I gave uh, up at uh, Ducks Race. There was a guy that was having bearing issues. About every five or six runs, they were putting rods in it, and and I gave him some Maxima oil, so what I run to try, and he called the local distributor down there and bought a 55 gallon drum motor. Everybody that I've ever had try it has never switched back. You use so, their diesel oil too in everything. I, I literally run Trucks, everything. Trucks, motorhome, everything. Chainsaw, lawn mower, everything. Okay, I gotta get back to work. Are we done? Okay. Because I gotta get my card together. JJ keeps blowing up my phone trying to buy my Chevy too. And I keep telling him it's not for sale. He is an insistent bastard. <laughs> All right. I'm out.